The Pennsylvania Game is made possible in part by... The Pennsylvania Public Television Network. In 1702, Elfrith's Alley was used as a cartway between 2nd and Front Streets in Philadelphia. Many of the street's early residents were mariners, craftsmen, and shopkeepers. What else is this street known for? A. The doorways to all the structures were only four and a half feet high. B. It was the site of the first public denunciation of slavery. C. It was the first street in America made with bricks. Or D. It's the oldest residential street in America. The answer is D, the oldest residential street in America. William Penn designed Philadelphia with ample plots and wide streets to prevent the overcrowding that contributed to London's Great Fire of 1666. But soon, alleyways intersected the broad avenues, providing modest housing for the immigrants and tradespeople. Created in 1702, Elfrith's Alley is lined with 32 colonial and federal period homes, each no more than 16 feet wide. The compact little alley and its narrow homes give the street an almost miniature dollhouse character. First known as Gilbert's Alley, it was renamed in the 1750s after Jeremiah Elfrith, a blacksmith and land speculator who built and rented many of the houses. Girard College in Philadelphia is a model to schools of its kind throughout the country. Which of the following is not true about Girard College? A, it's a private free college. B, 100% of its graduates are accepted to colleges and universities. C, it's the oldest orphanage in the nation. Or D, it's a boarding school for economically disadvantaged children. The answer is A, Girard College is not a college at all. It's a private co-educational boarding school for grades one through 12. All students accepted at Girard College receive free room and board and a totally free education. Girard College was founded by philanthropist Stephen Girard in 1848 as a boarding school for orphans, making it the nation's oldest orphanage. Known today as a college preparatory school, Girard is home for almost 600 children from families of limited financial resources or orphaned homes. Girard students follow a strict code of behavior at all times, and its rigorous academic program demands hard work and self-discipline. In 1999, 100% of its graduates were accepted to colleges and universities. Girard is one of about 25 residential schools in the U.S. that focuses on providing free educational opportunities to at-risk, low-income children. In 1871, David Stauffer started a business in York, Pennsylvania. What is his company best known for today? A. It's the leading maker of frozen entrees. B. It's the world's biggest heirloom seed company. C, it's the oldest international hotel chain. Or D, it's the world's largest producer of animal crackers. The answer is D. In 1871, David Stauffer started baking cakes and crackers, which he delivered door to door in a wheelbarrow to his York, Pennsylvania customers. The company's daily output, considered huge at the time, was five barrels or 750 pounds of crackers a day. Around the turn of the century, the D.F. Stauffer Biscuit Company started producing its famous animal crackers and has since become the largest producer of animal crackers in the world. Today, thanks to modern oven lines in three locations, the main facility in York, a plant in Blandon, Pennsylvania, and another in Cuba, New York, the company produces more than a half million pounds of animal crackers, cookies, and snack crackers each day. Pennsylvania industrialist Henry Clay Frick became a millionaire by age 30. In 1892, he was involved in which famous labor dispute? A, the anthracite coal strike. B, the war of Jenkins' ear. C, the great strike of Pittsburgh's railroad industry. Or D, the homestead strike. The answer is D, the homestead strike. Henry Clay Frick started his own Coke company at age 21 and eventually controlled 80% of Pennsylvania's coal output. He and Andrew Carnegie formed a partnership and in 1892, he was manager of the Homestead plant and chairman of Carnegie Steel Company. 
To increase profits, Frick lowered workers' wages, which sparked a strike by the Amalgamated Iron and Steel Workers Union. Frick brought in 300 Pinkerton guards to secure the plant against the striking men. Fierce fighting broke out, leaving 10 men dead and many injured in one of the most famous and deadly strikes in American labor history. Upon his death, he left endowments to establish Frick Park in Pittsburgh. And to New York City, he left his house, which contained priceless paintings, furniture, and Renaissance bronze pieces. Today, his house and its contents are known as the Frick Collection. The State College branch of the American Association of University Women holds an annual fundraising event that's the biggest of its kind in Pennsylvania. Is it A, a bake sale, B, a used musical instrument sale, C, a car wash, or D, a used book sale. The answer is D, the state's biggest used book sale. Whether in search of rare first editions or just good reads, browsers have plenty to wade through. Started in 1961 and held on Penn State's main campus, the annual four-day sale draws book lovers and book dealers from throughout the East Coast. 250,000 books were collected, sorted, hauled, and stacked for the year 2000 sale, along with maps, sheet music, videotapes, CDs, comic books, and more. Books and other items are collected year-round at donation bins outside the AAUW warehouse in State College. While sorting through the donated books, other treasures have been found, including money, a will, even dentures. It takes 400 members and volunteers to run the giant sale. Proceeds from the sale support scholarships, local educational projects, and nonprofit agencies that serve women. Opened in 1970, Francis Slocum State Park in Luzerne County was named for a Pennsylvania resident. Who was Francis Slocum? A, a Quaker girl kidnapped by Native Americans. B, a philanthropist who made her fortune bootlegging during Prohibition. C, the coal region's first visiting nurse. Or D, Senator Slocum's wife who drowned in the park's lake. The answer is A. Frances Slocum was a young Quaker girl who was kidnapped by Native Americans. In November 1778, Delaware Indians raided Slocum's Wilkesbury home and carried off five-year-old Frances, who spent the first night after her abduction in a crude shelter within the park boundary. She was raised by a family of Delawares moving westward. Given the name Makanaqua, or Little Bear Woman, she married an Indian chief and had four children. In 1835, 59 years after her abduction, she was reunited with her brothers, who had never given up their search for her. Although her brothers pleaded with her to return to Pennsylvania, she declined. She died in New Reserve, Indiana in 1838 at the age of 68. In 1895, Harry Houdini performed as a contortionist and trapeze artist in a Lancaster-based circus. What name did Houdini go by early in his career? Was it A, Harry the Magnificent, B, Handsome Harry, C, Eric the Great, or D, the Phantom Prince. The answer is C, Eric the Great. Born in 1874 in Budapest, Eric Wise became America's best known magician. He took his stage name from Robert Houdin, a French conjurer he admired, and became a professional magician in 1891. But Houdini was most celebrated as an escape artist. His life is chronicled in a museum believed to be the only one devoted entirely to Houdini in a restored turn-of-the-century house in Scranton. Houdini, who died on Halloween 1926, vowed that he would come back from the dead. He left his wife Bess a coded message and instructed her to contact him in the great beyond on the anniversary of his death. For the next 10 years, she tried faithfully to contact him, but was unsuccessful. Even for the great Houdini, death was the final act. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.